So let's start out looking at sort of the, the lay of the land in terms of how one uses SSH keys. You will generate a pair of keys on a computer that you have control over, typically your own machine, uh, and you're going to have a public and a private key, and they are referred to in Toto as the key pair. Now, you have a bunch of different ways that you can use SSH keys. Uh, the one that we're going to target in this class is as a user key. So you will have a private key on your own machine. Uh, this should never be shared or exposed to the public in any way, shape, or form. And then you'll have the public key, and this can be placed um, out in the wild on a cloud server, uh, which is going to help work that authentication process. Um, it's possible to have both a, a private and public key out in the wild in something like a, uh, a bastion host where you first use your uh, user key to get into that bastion host and then that remote machine is used to access other servers um, sort of and then the final uh, typical use of, of SSH keys is if you're transmitting large amounts of data and wanted to do that uh, in an encrypted and, and secure fashion, you can generate a key just for that process, and those are referred to as session keys. Um, you will notice that we've got that nice little SSH tunnel. Uh, once you have, in, in the diagram here, once you have uh, authenticated between an SSH server and your own machine with the public and private key pair, uh, those communications are encrypted and secure. And this is a, an advantage and an advance above some of the earlier processes like Telnet that used to be used for, to transfer information across the internet. Now, I think it's also helpful to understand what these things look like. They really are just files, and you can think of them as really, really big passwords in a way, uh, though we'll talk about how they work and are different from a password. Now, this is an example of a public key. Um, you'll see the file name rsa-id.pub. That .pub tells you it's a public key. This is the one that's okay to put out on that public-facing cloud server and, and onto the SSH server. Um, they typically start with the type of key. In this case, it's an RSA key, so it says ssh.rsa. Um, that f set of four A's at the beginning is also very typical for a RSA key. And then often you'll have some sort of a key which is more human readable. So in this case, we've made up a user for our Cumulus account, um, but this could as easily be just your email and you have an ability to configure what that is. And that just lets you know that, oh yes, that is actually my public key. Uh, so that you know that you're pasting what you're expecting to paste around somewhere. Then we have a private key and you'll notice that this is a different sort of format. It very much and clearly says, hey, this is a private key. In this case, you just have RSI, RSA-ID. There is no .pub. Uh, so lots of little clues there to say this is the private key. And certainly for a user key, you never want to share this with anybody. You don't want to paste it into an email. You don't want to put it on a website, anything like that. You want to keep that uh, secure and away from private prying eyes. Um, and if you can take one thing away from this class, uh, other than being able to use SSH keys, it's never share your private key. So once you've generated your private public key pair, and you then have copied a public key over to an SSH server in a public environment where you're expecting to get access to, let's say, a, a VM that you've created, you now are going to be in a position to use that system to get access to that remote server. Uh, if you don't have the right private key, you, sh you should not be able to get access to it. The way that you will get access to it, though, is that you initially send a request to the server. Uh, you have a little SSH command, and we'll obviously get into that in the labs. The, uh, this will initiate an SSH connection with that remote server. Uh, based on the username, the server is going to send a challenge question back to your computer, and using the SSH private key, your computer will then decrypt the message and send a response back. If that is an, the correct response, and it will only be the correct response if you have the, the private key that pairs correctly with that public key, at that point, the SSH server will say, you have passed authentication, sends a success message back, and your secure 
uh, session will will commence. And now you can just once you've authenticated and and you've effectively logged in, now you can go and and do things on that other machine. Uh, you have access to that machine. You can send files back and forth and, and whatever you need to do. Now at this point, the simple question of why do we use SSH keys may have crossed your mind. And that's a f perfectly fair question to ask. Um, certainly, you are probably aware of all of the problems that are involved with passwords from the, the challenges of remembering your just your username, let alone the password itself, from having to frequently change passwords for security purposes. The SSH key access, once it's been configured properly, actually makes connecting and authenticating um, much, much easier than the password process. The other problem with password access is that it's very easy uh, to take on somebody's identity. So as long as you have that right username and password combination, um, which aren't very long and complicated strings typically, uh, you can get access and authenticate yourself as somebody else on a server. With the SSH protocol, unless you have that private key, and again, I, you know, fundamental concept here is don't share that private key, at least not a user, user private key with anybody else. As long as you keep control of that, nobody else can authenticate as you, um, because your your public key can be in a number of different places, and you can use that same private key. Uh, to authenticate all over the place, and it is still secure as long as you maintain control of that private key. Uh, another thing that is beneficial about SSH over some of the previous communications protocols, things like Telnet or our login, where the earlier uh, protocols would send stuff in clear text. So if you could intercept that stream, um, either between devices or uh, by compromising a router or something like that, you could potentially just collect the data and read what was, was going across the wire, or you could potentially even change the message in, in route and, and send something uh, that was not correct to the, the or malicious to the final destination. So the fact that uh, the authentication process and authorization process um, are encrypted and then the subsequent communications are protected by the uh, encrypted SSH tunnel makes this a much more robust way to deal with uh, transmitting both authenticating users and transmitting data across the wire. Um, SSH protects against a lot of things that earlier protocols did not and even uh, potentially the simplify the process of authentication uh, and certainly make it much more secure and robust compared to passwords, but they don't protect you against everything. So again, the if you configure uh, your SSH process incorrectly, if you have your public key on your computer and put your SSH, your private SSH key out on the server, uh, this is bad, then th things, things will not go well in that case. Uh, if somebody actually has access to your uh, root account and can get access to that um, private key, Again, a bad situation, and and not having your uh, directory secured. So so, keeping control of your primary device, uh, keeping control of your private SSH key becomes very very important. But as long as you do that, SSH is much much better than using um, either older communications protocols or passwords. So by now you should have the idea uh, firmly ingrained in your mind that. Um, there are two keys uh, involved in the SSH process, and um, you have the private key and the public key. The private key, absolutely don't share it. That's that's the bottom line, that's the end of the message, and you will hear me say this over and over again, because public keys <coughs> do end up on occasion getting exposed. Um, <clears throat> the important thing to realize is if you have exposed your private key in some fashion, um, the correct thing to do is delete it and replace it anywhere, uh, replace your public key uh, with a new private public key pair uh, anywhere you had used that old one. Um, it's just, it's it's so easy to regenerate these keys and um, the potential pain down the road of uh, private key being used to access your private systems is just not worth the pain. Um, we'll come back in a minute to a caveat to that, but in terms of the private key that sits on the machine, your laptop, uh, your desktop computer, the uh, you know 
server that you uh, machine you use to to connect to any other system um, should always be kept close to the close to the vest and not shared. End of story. Um, public keys by default are designed to be shared. They are designed to put, be put out in the public. You don't necessarily want to you know post them on your social media feed. Um, and if you for some reason wanted or needed to do that, the, the password generation process or the key generation process comes with the option to use a password. Um, this is not always enabled and in, in some programmatic instances it's inadvisable because it just defeats the purpose of automating things. Um, but we'll, we'll get, get to that in a second. The main thing is that your key um, potentially should have a password on it if you feel that it uh, might get exposed or um, be subject to, to attempts to get access to it. Uh, the exception to the rule is that uh, you can use a uh, use the SSH protocol in some cases to automate systems or <clears throat> there's the possibility of using a system called a bastion host where you use your public private key pair to get access to a remote server and then on that remote server you have another um, public private key set up and basically use that secondary um, often virtual device as a means for accessing systems and and you give it certain amounts of authority and it's quite possible that you don't have a pass phrase on that and this is one instance where um, that bastion host uh, you still would use you know best practices to avoid it being compromised but in this case you may well have a private key um, sitting out on there but you have to realize that the the you use is different. Um, so the, the stuff that is uh, yours that you want to keep absolutely secure, at the very least um, put a password on it and uh, like I said your personal keys should not be shared or your personal private keys should not be shared. Alright so now that we've uh, provided you with I think ample background to understand both what uh, SSH is, what SSH keys are, um, how they work and why we want to use them. Let's go ahead and actually generate some keys. Um, if you aren't sure whether you have a SSH key, you can actually go into the in your in your home uh, directory. There's a hidden directory which is the .hh .ssh directory, and you can um, see what's in there. I just list it and um, now I had uh, this uh, my IDRSA with the underscores and dot pub and just the my underscore my IDRSA with underscores um, are my actual public private keys which I'm not going to show you uh, <laughs> which I renamed so that I could generate new ones because by default what you're going to end up with is an ID underscore RSA private key and the ID underscore RSA public key. So let's go ahead and um, do that. And it's it's very simple uh, in a Mac or Linux environment. You just SSH keygen uh, dash T which is giving us the type and we want an RSA and there's a bunch of other options that you could um, could add here but really we just want to generate an RSA key and we can go ahead and off we go. Uh, it's asking where you wanted to here it's asking where you want to uh, put this keys uh, and in this case this is it's just offering you the default uh, location you could if you have some reason define another one so we can just accept the default. Um, here is your opportunity to enter a passphrase and again uh, if this was actually a, a if this was actually my key <clears throat> I would absolutely say put in a passphrase. If it's something that you're using to uh, enable a service to securely communicate with another service uh, in, in the context of automating something uh, a 
passphrase is going to be problematic and you could leave it off. For our case, since we're doing a demo, we can just go ahead and uh, not add one, just hit return. Okay, and we've now generated a key and it gives us the SHA-256 hash. It uh, has a random art image and the idea behind this random art image is that uh, any key will have a random art image that is quite different and uh, for our purposes uh, really if you were, were we're not going to make use of it there's also a fingerprint um, that will show up which is a bunch of numbers and the idea is this is supposed to give you a visual idea if maybe you're using a key pair and um, something is up. It'll give you, a, if, if you're familiar with your random art image or the, the fingerprint, you can then say, hey, this, this doesn't quite look right, and maybe you double check to make sure. Uh, potentially, you're just trying to connect to the wrong machine, uh, which is good to know. Uh, but in some cases, it might mean that there's something uh, not quite proper going on, and you, you might want to abort your session. Okay, um, so we're still in the .ssh directory. Now we should see, um, there it is, the id underscore rsa and the id underscore rsa.pub. Now, <clears throat> since this is a, a course and I am not going to actually use these keys, I'm just going to delete them, <clears throat> we can go ahead and I, I don't mind showing you the um, what the private key looks like. And here we go. And it, it tells you quite explicitly. So if you, uh, quite often, one of the things that you will do is copy and paste your SSH key into a remote environment. Um, this will let you know that you're dealing with a private key. It very clearly tells you that this is a, a, a private key, <laughs> both at the beginning and end of the file. Um, and clearly, this is not the file that you would want to be sharing anywhere, OK? Get out of here. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the public key, and this is what you would be um, wanting to copy and, and work with. Looks a little bit different, right? Um, first off, it, it starts off with ssh-rsa. Um, you also have a little comment there at the end, uh, which gives you a sense of where you generated it. Um, and this whole string is the key. You don't actually need this last little bit, but everything else um, would be, actually you don't need to necessarily copy this, but it helps you identify that it is your key or the key that you think it is. Um, obviously this is the default, but this SSH-RSA and the four A's are pretty much uh, what you would expect to see along with all of these other random things. So you can really think of it in a way as a really, really long <laughs> and random password, which is one of the, the strengths of these. Um, but then the, the automation that, uh, in, in terms of authenticating and, and confirming the, the identity of both users at either end, both your machine and the machine at the other end, is the other real power that um, this protocol and, and this method of authentication have over using just a standard password. All right, so let's say we wanted to uh, SSH into a remote host. Now, we can do that actually without using public-private keys. Uh, we could say and now we're being challenged with a password. So this is the standard username password sort of model um, but let's say we don't want to use a password password now we've let's escape from that uh, in this case what when we set up our uh, public private keys we can now simply use essentially the same command except for now it's not going to ask for the password because it's automatically going to generate a public uh, it, it's going to make that connection between the public and private keys. What's even more clever is if we then don't want to type this out every single time we want to SSH and rather create an alias. 
let's say we call it dev. Now, if we want to SSH, and in this case, I haven't set up the, the public private key pair on this uh, site, but dev will now provide us with the, the username, at least. And in this case, we would still need the, the password. But if you have gotten your key pair set up, this will automatically then log you in. Now, if we want to get a little bit fancier uh, and more elegant, perhaps, uh, we can look at our SSH config file and add some configurations to it, to, or customizations to it. So this is going to be in your .ssh file, so we want to switch over there. And there is the config file, so we'll edit the config. And we've got actually don't need that, so we can get rid of that one. So now what we can do is say for this dev alias that we've created, we can define a host name. Uh, perhaps we want to specify a different port to SSH2. The default would be 22, maybe it's 3400, 34,000. And then finally we can define our user. And with this set up, uh, you can now basically SSH dev and the options are going to be pulled out of the uh, the configuration file, so you don't need to send up an alias every time you log into your shell, and this is this is already there for you. Um, so again, just a way to cut away a few of the extra steps that you would have to go through, especially if you're doing this uh, continuously in a dev process, even if it's saving you doing this once or twice or three times a day, um, that's still worth the little bit of effort that it would take to set this up. All right, so we've managed to generate keys. We've looked at how they're used. Um, we've talked about it conceptually, um, but let's actually put one into effect. Now, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our public key and we're gonna load it up into GitHub, which is a popular version control uh, repository uh, where a lot of, lot of people develop uh, different software projects, open source, private, uh, you name it, it's, it's one of the largest repositories out there. And we will then um, do a very basic uh, action there that allows us to show you that we're actually using the keys. So the first thing, uh, well, we can, we can jump over to uh, GitHub here. And actually, let me go back to the home page so you can see where you're going. So it, you would have to create your own account, obviously, but this is what you'd see. You would land in your um, home page, and then you just need to go over to the settings. You have all the settings there, and here's your SSH and GPG keys. Now, uh, we want to add a new key. This is not going to generate it for you, and we can just call it new key. And now you would simply paste your key in here. And to do that, we need to get our key. So let's go over to the to our directory, make sure that we have our key in there. And again, we are going to do the public key, not the private key. I don't know how many times I need to say that, but uh, yes, public key. So we want to, we can just grab it here. And we just want to grab all of this from SSH, RSA, all the way through the, the back end. You don't actually need that JSTARMER or whatever your particular identifier is. Um, again, that's there so that it makes it a little bit clearer. If that's not your name or something you don't recognize, it's probably not your key kind of thing. So we're going to go copy that, paste that in here, and there you go. Um, 
here's the the fingerprint this is just a little this is sort of like that uh, little random art image that you saw when it was generated um, you can become a little bit familiar with that and then if you're using a key or see a fingerprint pop up and it's not that or it doesn't look quite right you can double check against that more easily than having to compare the whole string um, so now we're we're good <clears throat> let's go back to the main page and what we're going to do is we're going to clone one of these repositories so we can just let's say look at this one now cloning is if you're not familiar with git or github is is making a copy of this repository basically the content that's here um, we're going to clone with ssh so we need to grab this and then we're going to pop back to our command line we're going to git clone So git clone is the command. Um, the the URL that we have, or that little snippet that we got from uh, GitHub, is telling the the system where to find the the that repository, that content, and then the SSH demo was just we're telling it where we should actually put that. And actually, I want to get out of my let's get out of this directory. Try that again. Okay. So now it's pulling down that information. And hmm, interesting. Look at that. We we are being asked for a password. Now in this case, um, the key I generated has a password with it because I wanted to keep it safe, and we can enter that. Now it's happy and off we go. Um, if I had created a passwordless uh, key this would have just gone ahead and, and done this without any any prompting for the passphrase so let's just let check real quick and do we have our SSH demo yes we do so let's go ahead and uh, go over there and um, let's just Check that demo file. We're going to just do a little edit to it. Save that, and we've successfully modified it. Now we're going to get add. All right, so now we've seen that we had to use a actually use our passphrase twice. And initially, when we pulled it down, and now when we pushed it back up. What we can do though uh, is change the password. And now it's going to ask me where it is. It's in the default directory here. We enter the old passphrase. And now we have the option of saying no passphrase. So we're going to do that, repeat it. And now we have gotten rid of the passphrase. So now let's make a quick change to that demo file. Let's um, we get rid of this file. And now we'll go ahead and git add. OK, so um, <clears throat> we're all ready to go. Uh, but now we can go ahead and git push.
and you see we weren't asked for any um, any password. Now we can go here look at demo file and um, you, you can see the last commit was here and it's got we've removed that that fourth line. So um, I'm gonna go back and put a password on that because I prefer to have a password on my own personal key. Um, but this is one th way where you avoid having to use a password which can be useful for automation. But um, just a little bonus session here on how to uh, use GitHub with your, your keys, a, a pretty common use case. And um, I hope you found this useful. I hope you found the course useful. And, you know, absolutely come back uh, and check out some of our other courses if you'd like to continue your education with us. Uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. Hello and welcome to Cumulus Technologies SSH Basics for Cloud Security. I'm John Starmer. I'm the Director of Education here at Cumulus Technologies, uh, and I'm really thrilled that you're checking out our class. The reason I built this class was that we had students coming into our basic cloud computing and even our advanced topics uh, courses uh, not quite solid enough on how to use SSH keys. And this is, uh, in my mind, a fundamental sort of skill before you get into dealing with cloud stuff. Uh, this is really the way uh, authentication is dealt with in most systems in clouds. Uh, we don't really use p the password model that we're all familiar with from logging into phones and laptops and uh, accounts online. Even though it's a much more robust and secure model for authentication, it does have limitations, and those limitations can have major impacts if you use these keys incorrectly online. So what I wanted to build was a course that's very practical and hands-on. Uh, it's going to give you the basic background that you need to understand just what the heck are these things. I'm not going to dive deep into uh, encryption and tunneling and some of the other topics that I certainly encourage you to go on after taking this course and, and finding out more about that. Uh, but really, this is how do you create a pair of SSH keys for yourself to use? Uh, how do you appropriately put the right key into a cloud environment so that you can access it? And then how does that, uh, that access process work? And if you are uh, motivated and uh, want to try to actually use it, we'll, we'll have some exercises at the end where you actually get to log into a uh, remote server using your SSH keys in a public cloud environment. So if this sounds interesting, uh, you're in the right spot. I look forward to seeing you in class.